Is coffee healthy? Well, I changed my mind. Hey, what's up? My name is Skylar Deem. I'm the founder of Reach Fat Loss and Fitness, where our goal is to help you lose weight, build muscle, do it as sustainably and as efficiently and effectively as possible. Every single video I put out on this channel is geared to help you get the best results. So make sure if you are not subscribed to the channel, you tap that subscribe button because I'm putting out new videos every week. So a few months ago, I put out this video. In that video, I answered the question, is coffee healthy? In that video, I said that as long as the coffee was high quality, brewed sustainably, wasn't overloaded with sugar and wasn't drank too late at night, that it was healthy. I disagree with that statement now. So for the month of September this year, I decided to give up caffeine for 30 days. We've got a recap video coming of that soon. So again, subscribe to the channel. During that month, I had a friend reach out and recommend a book called The Caffeine Blues. Now, this is a really interesting one. It's a book written by a guy named Steven Chernisk. He's a research and a clinical nutritionist. He definitely knows what he's talking about, but this was published in 1998. And as far as I have seen, it is one of the only sources of learning about the potential negative consequences or side effects of having too much caffeine. Honestly, a lot of what I see today is geared towards the benefits of caffeine, of how healthy caffeine is. And this book was a very, very interesting read. Now, this isn't just some opinion. This isn't just something that took a week or a month to write. This book literally has 40 plus pages of different resources with hundreds hundreds of different studies on the negative consequences of caffeine. Now, does this mean that coffee or caffeine in itself is unhealthy? No, just like most things, the danger is in the dosage. However, in our modern society, most people are way overdosing on caffeine. Now, the truth is there is literally so much information in this book that I kind of don't know where to start, but I'm going to recap this as best as I can. So the standard dosage that a lot of studies typically refer to is that anything under 300 milligrams of caffeine a day can be considered healthy. Now, first of all, if you look at the average size of our mugs or the average Starbucks order, most cups of coffee are way over the standard size, which is 100 milligrams. And depending on the size, this could take literally one or two cups of coffee a day to meet that 300 milligram requirement. And this goes for pre-workouts as well. A lot of pre-workouts have 300 plus milligrams as well. But along with that, the crazy part is that depending on gender, depending on age, depending on health, depending on stress levels, that number could be lower. So if you are a female, if you have some pre-existing health conditions, or you just have a higher than normal stressful life, odds are that the daily tolerance that you're looking for is much less than 300 milligrams. So I'm gonna list this off from this book. This is again, distilled from a lot of information, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but over consuming that caffeine, so wherever your normal mark is, can lead to liver issues, constant fatigue, high stress levels, dopamine issues, burnt out adrenal glands, fast aging, a lower immune system, poor sleep, poor recovery, malnutrition, can also lead to anxiety, panic attacks, depression, anger, and if consumed long enough, can lead to heart attack, stroke, chest pain, hypertension, and rheumatic heart disease and atherosclerosis. Now that literally sounds like a drug commercial, right? The side effects that are listed on the end. And the truth is a lot of people are experiencing these side effects without understanding that there's the connection to caffeine that they're experiencing, right? There are a lot of people who get extremely anxious throughout the day or extremely tired throughout the day and they think it's unrelated. Meanwhile, it's potential withdrawal symptoms from caffeine. So I'm gonna go into a couple big takeaways that I got from the book, but first I would love if you could leave me a comment. On average, how much coffee are you drinking throughout the day? You have one cup, two cup, three cups, let me know in the comments because I love hearing from you. All right, I got five takeaways from the book. Number one, the caffeine industry is pretty messed up. There's a lot of positive studies around caffeine that are being funded by caffeine companies. The coffee industry is making an insane amount of money and there's a lot of other corruption going on, including how we interact with other countries that are growing the coffee bean. Number two, Caffeine in itself is not bad. If you moderate your caffeine intake and you take time to detox every couple of weeks, it can actually be extremely useful. Now, detox can normally be uncomfortable. However, this book does have a playbook for how to eliminate the detox and withdrawal symptoms. So if you are looking for that, leave a comment and I can send that to you. But overall, since doing this detox challenge where I went off caffeine, I've been having coffee two to three times a week and that's my maximum. I won't have it two days in a row and I give my body a chance to detox. Number three, it seems like cortisol, which is the stress hormone hormone is the biggest player in this. Not only does overconsumption of caffeine really mess with the hormone cortisol, but if you have high levels of stress through your daily life, caffeine is going to have more of a negative impact on you. And again, this doesn't just have to be emotional stress. This could be cortisol from under eating, from overeating, from not getting enough sleep, from over exercising. There are a lot of different ways our body can produce cortisol. And again, if you have high cortisol and you pair that with caffeine and overconsumption of caffeine, it can create a lot of issues. Number four, 
A lot of people think coffee creates energy, but it doesn't. Coffee actually blocks the receptors in your brain that collect something called adenosine, which is basically a compound that alerts you when you're tired, right? It's what caused you to feel tired. So while your body may need recovery, it may need rest, when you take coffee, it's an artificial blocker of these adenosine. So you basically prevent yourself from feeling tired in that moment, but it leads to some consequences down the line. True energy is created from moving your body and from properly fueling yourself with nutrition and proper sleep. And so if you're just using caffeine for energy to cover all those things up, you're probably going to run into some issues down the line. Number five, this is the crazy part, is caffeine can lead to a lot of major mood swings. I had an experience of this in my life and there are a lot of experiences in the book where people had these anxiety or panic episodes and when they took the time to figure out when they were experiencing them, it was always a couple hours after they had had their last cup of coffee. This is the crazy part. You may be going throughout the day, you may feel a little angry, frustrated, stressed, anxious, and you may think it's just normal, you're not sure where it's coming from, but it could potentially be caffeine withdrawal symptoms. That's why a lot of people unconsciously will have multiple cups of coffee spread throughout the day is because by doing so, they're alleviating the withdrawal symptoms. So it's not just energy, it's not just the positive side of the caffeine, but if you do become chemically addicted to this and you are over consuming it, coming off of it can lead to some intense issues. So does that mean you should never drink coffee again? No. Does that mean that you should feel bad about drinking coffee? No. This information is here to empower you to start to make better decisions. So if I were you, what I would do is slowly start cutting back on caffeine. Leave a comment below so I can send you the exact playbook of how to do that with avoiding the withdrawal symptoms. Slowly wean yourself off and get to the point where you use caffeine and coffee as a treat just a couple times a week. There's a high likelihood that you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to be a lot more naturally focused and naturally energetic throughout the day and your life's just gonna improve overall. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you are looking for support on your health and fitness journey, you're looking for help losing fat and building muscle, check out the free training in the description of this video. It's, it's gonna walk you step-by-step step through our system so you can see if it's a good fit for you. And if you believe it is, there's a application there that you can book a time with me so we can chat and see if it's a good fit. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. And of course, as always, make sure to eat smart, move more, sleep deep, and be grateful for this moment. I'll see you in the next video.